Now, Tio, you've been very vocal last time you talked to me about how you got the audition for um, Cheryl Rockmore and Keenan and Kel, but if you don't mind telling again, how did you get the role? Um, just a regular audition, just what every actor goes through um, with the auditioning process. Mm -hmm. So getting the call from your agent and going to the audition. But as we spoke before, um, I did not really know what the interview was for. So that's what was so ironic. I got the message. I just didn't have all the details, which is fine. Uh, we sometimes, you know, less is more. And as an actor, I would always say, well, if I don't have all the details, it's kind of okay. I like being kind of raw and surprised in what I'm about to do sometimes. And then you just, you know, audition as naturally or as organic as possible, so to say. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's how it worked. Yeah, I didn't even really know what it was, and, and uh, I knew where to go. So when I got there, I kept seeing a sign that said Nickelodeon. And I thought, eh, okay, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I don't think it's this. And I left back out of the building. It was like on whatever floor, you know. So I took the elevator back down, left out the building, and I looked around again. And then I went back up again. And I just looked so confused. And someone came out and asked. I walked into the office, and they asked me, you know, my name. And then we just went through the whole process. They said, no, you're in the right place. And it was so funny because um, when they explained to me uh, what I was auditioning for, it, you know, they, the way they explained it, it, it was like this little build-up. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with this show called All That that's on Nickelodeon. I was like, yes. <laughs> and they said, okay, well, it's these two guys named Ken and Cal. I was like, yes. <laughs> and they said, well, those two guys are having their own show called The Kenan and Cal Show. And I was like, what? Oh, no. You know? And uh, so... It was fabulous. And they said, and so you're going to be um, auditioning for the mom to Keenan. And I just went crazy. I said, okay, we need to send everybody home because this is my part right here. This is my, I am the mom of Keenan. <laughs> and they were laughing hysterically. I was like, no. And it killed me. I was really serious. I was like, no, I need everyone to leave. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? Tell them the party's taken. Tell them they, I don't know, they have, like, pink eye, something. They need to leave this room immediately, exit stage left, because this is it. You, you know, the role is mine. And we just had a good time laughing about that, because, ironically, I had just been watching all that. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I love the show. And I kept saying, and it was funny, because I said, you know, I'm a grown person watching this show. Is this kind of awkward? And I remember calling a couple of friends, and I would say, God, there's this show called All That. And I would explain to my friends the show, and then I would always say, but there's these two young guys, Keenan and Cal, that are amazing. And I had the nerve to say, God, I would love to work with these guys one day. I said, they're just amazing. That's all I kept saying. And then lo and behold, I'm called in for this part, so it was fabulous. Awesome. And was this, um, did you have to audition right in front of Brian Robbins and Dan Snyder and Mike Tola? Um, for the first audition, it's usually just the casting director. So okay. um, I, I did great because they were still laughing at me by the time I came into the room. I, I, you don't understand. All I knew was this was my part. So I just... They really thought I was kidding, and I really wanted everyone to leave, and I could I could understand why they couldn't understand that. <laughs> oh. So we just all sat and laughed, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm serious. <laughs> so it was just a funny moment the whole entire time I'm, you know, auditioning in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And so I did great. I knocked it out, and of course, by the time I left out of the room, um, I called my agent, and they had said, well, you already have a call back. The, the key was uh, the producers, everyone were, were flying in that day, and it was going to be like, your call back was going to be within, I would say, I don't know, it was like five hours or something. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the three to five hours versus, okay, come back the next day or in two days, how typically it may be. So it was like, cool, and I actually was over at Universal. I kind of just hung around and, and waited and then went in. And 
that's when I was um, doing my second audition. Wow, wow. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. You were going to move to Orlando, Florida to shoot the pilot for the show at the Nickelodeon Studios. What was your first impression of the place, the studio, when you got there? Oh, it was fabulous. I mean, um, you know, it, it, was, it was everything. It was great. I mean, this was an awesome opportunity, obviously. Um, they already, you already knew that we were going to film the pilot in Florida. And then sometimes when you just have all that information, you're already mentally there. And so you always have to kind of pull yourself back and just stay in the moment. Stay in the moment, you know. So it was great to go there. We had a blast. Um, it, it was just fabulous. It was just a, a great time. And, and you know, we had a, uh, I, I remember we had a dinner the first um, night that we all arrived. And I think I was the last one arriving. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Vanessa, who played my daughter, Vanessa Baden, saying they were all kind of like, who is this kid? Why is she, you know, the last one? Oh, she must be this. And like, you know, all oh, ta-da, all oh, diva sort of say. Because I was the last one coming in. I was like, no, this is the time we did my flight. It wasn't about making a grand entrance, even though it seemed like I made a grand entrance. So um, I think I, I, the minute I got there, you know, I don't even know if I checked into the hotel yet. I think it was just like whisking me to the, to the dinner it was already in progress, you know, it was coming in very late. So it was, but it was great. I mean, meeting everyone, um, it was just great. It was great. And, you know, we had um, great producers, um, great bosses, so it was, it was fabulous. But thankfully, mm -hmm. this was picked up for a full season, Keenan and Cal. So what was a typical day like being there on set um, at the studio and whatnot for you? Um... Yeah, uh, again, a lot of great energy. Um, you know, it's a comedy, so you had, gr you know, great writers, um, great producers. I mean, the whole staff was phenomenal because this was such an exciting time. And then you're in, you know, beautiful Florida, Orlando, Florida, and you're on the studio lot of Universal. I mean, we were actually part of the Universal tours. Um, mm -hmm. So it was amazing. And then to get off work and go into the park and play... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like uh, the, the cherry on top of the whipped cream with the sprinkles all around, you know? Yeah. It was just, it was great. I mean, it was like kids heaven, you know? And um, we just had a great time. So to go to work and, you know, Monday's like your table read day. So that's when you're in the morning, you're, you get to work and you're doing your table read. So that's just going through the script. Um of that episode, one good time, just reading it, hearing everyone's tones and inflections, hearing, hearing it for the first time, and then you go, have a little break, sort of say, and then you go to the set and begin work. Because it's funny, like, people, you know, everyday people are not in this industry, they don't realize that you actually do go to work every day and rehearse. So, you know, people would ask me questions and they would say, oh, you go to work every day? I said, well, how do you think we do the show? Do you think we just, you know, show up and do a show? That's not how it works, you know. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. <laughs> and so um, I'm like, no, you have to rehearse. You rehearse. And um, every day, and at the time, you know, we filmed on Thursdays and Fridays, you know. So um, without an audience on a Thursday, I believe, and then with audience on Friday. Right. So, um, yeah. So it was. It was a great day. It was. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say easy, but for lack of better words, you were at work and getting paid to do what you love to do, mm -hmm. and to be in sunny Florida on Universal. I mean, you know, to, to my days would then after work. Which, mind you, some days were very short days, especially for the parents, because you know, obviously, Kid and Cal, it's their show, and in the you know, the first season, I'm not gonna say we were limited, but you know, we grew in our characters and in our dialogue. Mm -hmm. So you know, we were present. We were present. Yes, we had dialogue and scenes to know, but our days were not as long as Kid and Cal. 
right. all the time. So sometimes, yeah. So it was nice to get off work and then you could go home and be in the pool, you know, be at the pool all day for the remainder of the day. And that was my thing. <laughs> yeah. Being out at the pool and all of that. And then my daughter was with me. So, you know, she was having a fabulous time. Yeah, that just split up into three things because I know that most sitcoms, their Friday tapings are shot in front of a studio audience. So what, would, from your experience, what did you love about shooting in front of a live studio audience? What was the best part about that? Well, it's, just, it's the energy. It's the energy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's like if you've done, uh, if anyone has done theater, it's that same kind of, kind of thing. It's the energy of the people, just like you hear performers talk. Uh, what's the difference in studio to your concert? The energy, you yeah. know. Um, it's definitely the energy, and you love the connection that you can have with with your audience. Definitely, to like a party scene because you have your warm up guy, you have the DJ. You know, it, it's great. You know, live tapings are great, and so um, you can connect with the people. You can look out there and see everyone's expressions. I remember my cousins came in from Michigan. Mm. And, you know, they had been having just long days with their kids because they did the whole Disneyland thing, Disney, Disney, Disney World. World. Disney World thing. They were doing all of that, and they were exhausted. These kids were exhausted, okay? Then they come over to us. <laughs> they have front row seats. It was, it was so cute to me just watching them, not just the kids, but the two adults, mom and dad, laughing so hard they were red. Like, literally, they were laughing so hard watching the show. Because we had a live taping, too. You see all the other things that the people watching it from their homes don't see, you know? Live taping, you're seeing us mess up. You're seeing little things like us dancing in between, you know, the, the sets. You see all kind of just little things. And it, it's just so funny. You're just right there. You see it all. If we slip and fall, if you, you get it all. You, you get all the joking that's going on with the warm-up guy and all of that. Um, the dance competitions, they do so much to make it a fun event. So um, you see so much going on. So my cousins were having a great time. And then again, the cherry on top of the whipped cream with the sprinkles all around <laughs> was, was going into the park. And, you know, beating the lines, getting through the lines, you know, they didn't have to hunt. In other words, they didn't have to wait. Yeah. They had to <laughs> in line, and they thought, they were like, oh my goodness. So that was really great. We just had the best time. The, the best time. That is one of the best things about being there, having access to a theme park. And especially, I've talked to everybody, they say they, um, they love doing that. Did you have a favorite ride to go on at Universal Studios? Do you um, back to the Future. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, That's a popular one. Hands down with Back to the Future. You couldn't get enough of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a popular one. Everybody says that. And I did go there. I did go there in the 90s, so, and I loved that. And, but I really loved Jaws, too. And I loved yeah, the Jaws boat ride. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, it was really great. And then, you know, we had, the, you know, in the other room next to us, um, the other side of the studio, sort of say, you had... Um, where the games, where people were getting toured with the games, sort of thing. Yeah. You were getting slimed and all of that. And that was great because, you know, like I said, having my daughter there at that time, who was, you know, really young, um, um, she could, that's one thing, like, we did, I believe, for her birthday or something, we got her slimed. You know, little things like that. That was so cool. So she was having the best time ever, the best world ever, um, a charmed life, as I call it. Mm-hmm. By, be, by able, like being able to have all that going on, and then the guys were great with with my daughter as well. And uh, and I told her, I said, you know, she has mad sense of humor now because I told her, I said, if you want to be a part of this and come to work with me, sort of say, and all of that, you have to um, or hang around me at any point with the cast. I said, girl, you better learn comedy. You better learn some comedy. You better love. I always taught her to kind of laugh at yourself anyway. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm teaching her this at like three, okay? She had to keep up. She had to keep up. So, and she did. She had 
a mad sense of humor, you know? She was not sensitive about anything, like if the guys were teasing her about something, or you know, and so that was great that we could all be with uh, a great, it was very family friendly. It was. It was. I always tell that to people. What was one of the good things about living and working in Orlando? I, you kind of said small bits and pieces of it, but I think being there at the time it was just really fabulous, you know? Yeah, I just think the simplicity, you know. Um, it's, always, it's always fun um, shooting, period, usually on location. Mm-hmm. You know, and, I'm, and just from the on um, newness of everything, just that it, it's unfamiliar, you know, and sometimes, especially if you're doing a film, for example, and let's say um, it, it's you can concentrate more because you're not in the hubbub of L.A., you mm-hmm. know, and so, or even New York for that matter, but I think that that was it for me, the simplicity of it all. So, you know, it's just kind of like a, uh, when you have a new fresh perspective about something, it's the same thing shooting on location. It's all new, it's fun, it's different, you know, new people, new energy. That's mainly what it is. Mm. Every time I go there, I'm just amazed by the, um, like you said, simplicity. Like the shopping malls there, I think they're so great. Like you said, um, you guys used to get Ma, well, Keenan and Kel did whenever you guys went to the mall there. Yeah, um, there was really uh, something that was really just friendly about it. And speaking, and when you guys moved to LA, it was kind of made it like a business matter, and though, because I always assumed that about Los Angeles. Like, was there a reason you guys had to move the show to LA after two seasons, though? No, I just think, you know, no, there was no real reason. Um, that's what they did before. You know, sometimes you get your start in one place, and then, you know, maybe the producers ultimately have the goal to come back to here. Um, it could have been a contractual deal from the beginning made like that. I don't know, but it was great. So it was like two years in Orlando and then two years in Los Angeles. And um, trust me, Ken and I were like, let's stay here. It was just nice picking up, leaving, getting out of the hubbub, you know, of Los Angeles. But I, I do know Ken and Kel, especially at the time being young, young men, you know, L.A. is appealing, you know, is very appealing. So, and they were used to being here, too, uh, mm-hmm. taping um, all that. All that. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm almost, I'm almost certain they were already taping all that here. Yeah. Yes. And so, um... So that was good for them, you know, for, for us, for Ken and I, we, you know, we were just like, okay, well, back back to the grind <laughs> in a different way because you live in L.A. But then the great thing also was you were able to, um, in terms of industry, you, if we're talking industry-wise, you were able to um, still be involved. So, in other words, you know, casting directors can come see you, other producers, you could still network in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that was a good thing, too. It was just now you were going to be, you know, you're, you're here with your friends, and so, of course, when people had know you, so now everyone's really calling you about something. Yeah, you're right, because if you think about the directors and the casting directors and agents, they're already based in Los Angeles, so I think, and I think more exposure for the show would have helped, too, not that it was already popular in Orlando, but, you know, you guys could get, go to a war show, go to, like, publicity events yeah, for Nickelodeon. Absolutely. Mm-hmm, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and which way, and, and, you know, the show did win a Cable Ace Award, so that was, that was huge, so, you know, which is, you know... Um, yeah, that was huge. And, you know, the other thing, um, like I said, it, it, it is L.A. It's, it's where, you know, movies happen and TV happens. So it made sense. It definitely made sense. Um, yeah, you got back into your kind of, I mean, it, it, for us, it's Ken and I, I'm saying the more mature people, we said, okay, now we're you're back at work. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like a vacation in Florida. You come here, you're like, okay, we're going to work now. And then again, your friends, you have, you know, again, you'll have those distractions, and some people didn't understand how you work. So I, you know, it was amazing how many people were calling me while I'm working on the set. I'm like, why? I'm on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're working? Yes. Well, when do you work? What do you mean? When do you work? You go to work every day? I go to work every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Hilarious. That was kind of funny. 
you know, we actually, you know, we got so great at what we were doing. Um, also, we were able to then go down to four days working. So instead of Monday through Friday, we were doing Monday through Thursday. So we really had to be on top of our game. And that was great, you know, pushing you to just know your stuff, being excellent. And um, so the rehearsals were Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday was, you know, a tape day, actually, without studio and, I mean, without audience. And then Thursday was your um, taping with audience. So. And this is going to be kind of fun, but were you ever slimed at one point? Did you ever get the green slime on you in a way? No, is that crazy? I don't think, I can't remember. I don't think I was ever slimed, which was... And it, yeah, because yeah, because the show you guys went through a lot of like messy, like you guys used to like break down the house, uh, like break down the house with you know it was a crazy fanatic show, something like that. But you you guys went through a lot on the set, breaking stuff, things, and people getting dumped. Oh, I would have loved to gotten fun. I, you know, I don't know why they missed that, but they did allow me to get a pie in my face. Ooh. So I did enjoy that. And they were shocked. You really want to do that? Yes. Like, who doesn't want to get a pie thrown in their face? Are you kidding me? It always looked good to me, like, to get the pie in your face and you can kind of lick it. And like, ooh, you know. So it always looked good to me. So, you know, I kind of, I like that kind of Lucille Ball, I love Lucy comedy. Mm-hmm. I love when they had us one time jump out the window even. See, oh, I love that. I love that. I couldn't wait till we did things like that to, until they added some physical comedy to the parents. I couldn't wait. And when we went on the, um, when my husband on the show got the new job, <laughs> and um, we were all in the wilderness of how we, um, something with, I think we got, I think we had something dumped on the stand. Oh yeah, some water or something went through. I mean, I think that was great. I loved that physical comedy. Loved it. I, I wish I had did more, you know? I remember Malcolm, he was taping our show, at the time, uh, directing our show, and he had to stop. We had to pull it together. They were like, you guys, you have to pull it together. Because it, it was tell dialogue, and, you know, to this day, I laugh. Because it's like, how can you portray this character so seriously? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And, oh, and, and that made it funny, especially when you're up in their face. And so when the cameras were not on us, we were literally dying laughing. And that's what we loved about the show. It was just the simplicity of it, how Keenan and Kel were just two regular guys and not these, the average, you know, I want to be famous singers that we have today. But there was something magical about Keenan and Kel and all of the shows from the 90s Nickelodeon area. Like, how does that make you feel to know that many years later, these shows still have such a positive impact and they're still loved by people today? I actually love it. Ironically, taking my daughter to the airport the other day and um, seeing her off, you know, to uh, play. You know, she's a basketball player, so Mm -hmm. she's um, traveling internationally to go play. And so we're at the airport and... As she's going through the gate, there was this, this nice gentleman, and, he, and I even kept saying, "Oh, he's so happy! You look at him; he just, you know, just he was just smiling and happy and taking tickets. It was great. I just respected that. I'm a young guy too, and um, so my daughter goes through, and we're like, goodbye. I'm like, I love you. So proud of you. I love you. You know, doing all of that. And as I'm watching her, the gentleman is kind of trying like looking at me mm-hmm. and he's just like God, do, do I, know, I, I know you do I know you and then I was like you do he said you look so familiar and he was doing his hand like think of like Madonna and, and, and Bo you know? mm-hmm, yeah. and so he's doing his hand like your face I like, like know you I was like you do he's like okay maybe you just have a familiar so it's because I'm questioning him he's questioning himself you know wow and he goes well maybe I no, but maybe you just have a really familiar face. And I was like, okay, well, who do you think, who, who do I look like to you? He goes, oh, uh, you look like someone like maybe from TV? Then he kept saying, because I'm not giving up any information, he goes, oh, 
okay, maybe you just, you know, some people just have that faith. But God, it's like I know that faith. And I said, well, I'm just curious. Like, I really was curious. I said, I'm just curious. What are you, who do you think I could be? Or what am I looking like? And then he goes, God, you look just like the mom from Kenan and Carol. I died laughing. I was like, yep. I did like a thumbs up and turned around. And I did my finger like, shh, don't say anything. And then I turned around. He was like, oh, my God. You know, so that was kind of cute. You know, that was, you know, like a cute moment. And it just reminds you, please don't go out looking cray-cray. Um, <laughs> because of those kind of moments you could have, you know? Wow. Yeah, thank, God. thank God my hair was combed, that's all I could say. Oh yeah, I was about to say. Like, do you, are you surprised that people still know, remember you, like, and still know that you, you look like that from the show? Like, you know. Yeah, well, I think you know the short haircut gives it away, and mm-hmm. you know it's just like my signature cut. But it, it's funny because I remember being home in Lansing while I was doing the show, and I'm leaving the mall, and you know I'm not that kind of person. People don't recognize. I want people to know me. I don't care, you know. And so. um... It was funny that, you know, I'm walking out of the mall, like, you know, with a family member or something, and then I hear this person's walking towards me, and they walk past, I go, God, that looks like the mom from Kenan and Cal. And then they go like this, why would she be here? <laughs> so I died laughing. I wanted to turn and say, because I'm from Lansing, you know, mm. I'm visiting. So it's funny that that does happen sometimes, but I mean, I definitely hear people whisper, say, God, well, they're like, well, why would she be here? Like, why would she be walking the streets? You know, that's crazy. So you you do get that. Yeah, I, yeah, it's enormous. It's amazing, but it's an amazing feeling, you know. But do you mind explaining what you have been up to these days? Because unfortunately, the internet says that you haven't done any acting since Keenan and Kel ended. So. Well, yeah, and, and I know a lot of people. You know, people have asked about that. Well, towards the end of the season, I did, you know, get married. And I had, um, I'm, I'm very much into business, so at the time my husband and I were creating a small business, and I, I did focus on that and allowed myself to be a wife, you know, that type of thing. Um, unfortunately, only so many years into my marriage, my husband died tragically. He was in a, a tragic boating accident. Mm-hmm. And so at that time, even though I was still auditioning and working on things behind the scenes, um... I kind of, I, I took a leave, and mainly because, you know, it's just my daughter and I out here in Los Angeles, and she had been a highly recruited athlete, and she was at a very uh, elite school from 7th through 12th grade, and so, um, college prep school, so I, I focused on her, um, when I talked about this before, I think for me, it's very, it can be challenging to be in a career that's all about you, very self-centered, and then having my daughter at the stage that she was, unless you're going to have nannies or have people coming out taking care of your child, um, it was very important for me to be present for her. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's what I chose to do, and then just work on stuff that I could, especially because I love being behind the scenes, I love creating and producing, so I still have my hand in the business, you know, even now I'm completing a book, you know, um, I love children's books, so I'm completing a, a children's book, so there's been a lot, and, and this is what I tell people, uh, the running joke among the sporting world, at least the moms and other family members I would be with, uh, during this whole basketball thing, I would say, people, you think you know D1 sports, you have no idea. Like, it is major, and it's a business, okay? So just focusing on that a lot and being present is what I was doing. Now, I kept saying, okay, it's my time. <laughs> and then as she played in college and very successful there, it was just, I was just, in that world, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like I said, there was other things I was doing, um, working on someone else's script, tweaking it. Sometimes, I, you know, I've been um, asked to do things like that, work on a script, help create it and develop it. So um, someone contacted me for that, and I was working on that, which, you know, takes a lot of time as well. 
So there have been other things that have, that have not had me in the forefront, but have still kept me busy in production. And then um, I, I am very much into business. So sometimes it's just uh, doing business. I was a silent, silent partner in a restaurant that ended up closing. They just, the original owners just wanted to do something different. It just wasn't wasn't working the way they wanted. So I was involved in that. That was a great opportunity. So there were just other things like that. And still doing my speaking engagements, you know, I do speak to you at risk and do a lot of mentoring and different things, empowerment speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, very involved. I was very involved with uh, supermodel Kathy Ireland. She had me been for teen moms. I was very involved with. So just a part of things, you know, that keeps me still out there and doing my passions, you know. Um, and, and it's great to have more than one passion. I would hope people have several. And, um, and, and try to kind of get all of them in your life to do it. So now, fast forward, you know, I had been working on, um, you know, how they do plays that are been going to TV. I had recently been working on that. Um, and uh, we're still finishing that. So... Um, you know, we can always talk another time about that project. And um, I've been asked to come and do um, other engagements and workshops in other cities that just don't have people coming to the city talking to them about the business and different things like that. But more more than anything, I am, you know, getting back. And it, it's been great. I mean, just reading scripts again and um, having people have me look at scripts and see if there's an interest in a project, that's been, that's been pretty great. And it's my time, you know, it's my time, and, and I'm glad that I've evolved to this. And I think um, coming back, I'm just that much better. I'm just so much better, so much stronger, just all of that. Not that I wasn't before, but when, you know, when, when you evolve, as you can consistently evolve in life, you should be better. Mm. And I believe you should get older and better. You know what? You make perfect sense. I think this is a good thing because acting, it's one thing, but there's so many actors who don't dabble into the other professional arts of the business. Like you said, um, script writing and plays and developing behind the scenes. I think that's most important in that world as well because, you know, acting can go on for so long, you know. Now, I think you know that um, Nickelodeon Studios was closed. Um, it's been gone for nine years now, but it's missed by so many people. They would love to see it back. They want to see more shows produced and just take the tour again. Would you like to see it reopen one day? Do you think it should come back? Oh, absolutely. I was. I couldn't believe when the studio was closing. I just couldn't understand it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's such a fabulous place to be on so many levels. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. On so many levels. It just, it, it, it was just joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. That's how I looked at it, you know. And um, I was, yeah, I was very disappointed when it when it closed down. So I think it would be a, a winner to... Um, reopen and again part of the tour and to bring shows there and oh my gosh it would be great yeah i mean like you said um you don't like being you didn't like being stuck in one place all year round i mean i think other actors they would love to go somewhere that's not los angeles and hollywood and get away and bring the hollywood to another location like you said before you know mm-hmm. i think it and you know what again i think it opens things up for other people that are not part of L.A. You know, I always tell people, you know, L.A. isn't the, the end all, even though to a degree it is. But I get it, you know. But it's not the end all. There's a lot of other world out there. And I think we, we have the opportunity to take shows outside of L.A. Even though it, you know, brings employment. And I get that side of it, the politics of it, bringing the employment to the city, employing people, especially in, in L.A. where the industry is, for real. But... Let's say when we do shoot, just talking merely for uh, the purpose of a uh, public, so to say. When we do the show or when we were doing the show in Florida, for instance, it's just all those people who get to touch you who normally don't have this type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's so great about it. If we just come from that 
perspective. Yes. You know, so giving people an opportunity. It's a learning process. Getting close to the people that you wouldn't expect it to be is one of the great benefits of doing that um, showbiz and TV aspect, you know? Yes, exactly. And, exactly. Fi- and finally, I think you said, already said it a lot, but what do you think made Nick Studios Florida so great and special? <laughs> You know, they, well, besides the shows that were there, mm-hmm. um, again, the people, the people, oh, yeah. you know, the people, the energy, uh, the newness, yeah, yeah. And, and opportunity, it, it was a special place to be at that time, and I'm sure it would still be that if it reopened, yeah, um, again, something, something different, something new, I mean, come on, at the end of the day, we all want to laugh as loud as we can, as hard as we can. We want to smile. We want to toss our cares away, and that's the kind of place that 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 did for you. You could go in. I mean, I would see the parents, you know, even getting slimed. It just allowed you to have a happy place, to be in a happy place. Yeah, I mean, that's why I wanted to create this documentary. This happy place was just an enormous amount of talent. It brought an enormous amount of energy. It touch so many people's lives and there's so many good things you could do with it there like there's no other place like it I feel like you know there's all especially on a big studio lot I mean there's so many access to and privileges there I mean and that's why I wanted to create this document and showcase people of why this mm-hmm. place was a monumental moment in children's TV or television right, right. And, and then you know again we go back to simplicity you know um, it's like with anything you know, when things, you know, in L.A., for instance, if you're saturated with something in one place that really happens in one place, you know, when you when you take it someplace else that is a little empty, you know, it kind of fulfills people's lives in various different ways, in more than one way, right? Right, right. Because it's something new, you're kind of feeling voids, whether it's yet... On the other political level, you're giving employment to people and different things like that. But then again, we're part of we were part of the Universal tour. Um, it's 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 bringing Hollywood to Florida. It's just new things, new ideas. It's just part of the whole creativity process. It's everything new with a little bit of simplicity. It's just like being in New York and in LA. You know, this is where the business is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then um, it's. It's the norm. But when you take things out, you're like, okay, this is kind of nice. This is kind of nice. And I think it refreshes everybody, even performers. It refreshes everyone to be in New Orleans filming or in other places filming. It, it, it's just new perspectives, that's all. Yeah, it makes things easier. And you get to meet so many different people, you know. Right. And it's only temporary, you know, like I said. You know, this is the hub up. This is definitely the hub up. I get it. I mean, when I go to a studio here, even when I was doing the radio show, like, going, looking at all the studio doors of all the shows being produced, that is an energy that is just priceless. You know? Mm-hmm. Priceless. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it is an in, uh, energy that is indescribable. I can't tell you enough how much I love that. Just going to the studio, seeing the, the, the people do their thing, and it, it's easy, you know, it's where the business is, and then the power lunches and all that, I love that, I do love that, there's, you know, because this is where it is, however, there's still something for going outside as well, you know, there is something for that too. It is, it is. And Tia, I especially really enjoyed talking to you today and learning so much about you and your time with Nickelodeon and stuff. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this.